grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome. Today we are looking at the topic Christ as the head of the new race. Christ as the head of the new race. Basically, there are two races of man. I could say it's the old man, the race of the old man, and the race of the new man. Let's forget about the Caucasian, the blacks, the, uh, the Hispanic, the Asians. There's just two basic races in my own opinion before God. The color of our skin is just what differs. It's still the same. The, uh, the blood of every human is still the same red. So let's not be too concerned about the color of the skin. Before God, there are two men, Adam and Christ. The first Adam and the last Adam. Adam, the first Adam, is the head of the old creation race and Christ in resurrection is the head of the new creation race. So there are two federal heads before God, Adam and Christ. Federal heads in terms of that they represent God's two creation, the old creation and the new creation. So today the focus is on Christ as the head of the new creation. The first Adam as the head of the old creation includes all his descendants, everyone born of a woman, is a descendant of Adam by creation because Adam is the first man that was created and every person that is a human has their origin, their roots in the first Adam. So he includes himself and all his descendants, everybody, even those of us, as many of us that are saved today, our original or initial root was in Adam. It was in salvation, God changed our roots to the new creation. So the first Adam as the head of it. So the head means that that's the source, that's the medium or that's the, uh, that's the origination. It doesn't mean that that is God himself as Adam. He was created, but that was true. That was the channel through which God used to create every, uh, uh, every other person in that same creation. So the last Adam, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, as the head of the new creation, includes all his believers. So just as the first Adam includes all all his descendants the last Adam also includes all his believers and why some of my ask what's the basis so I mean why is this so important it's very important because uh, however way God is dealing with any man is based upon the works of those two heads so I wasn't in the garden of Eden to eat the apple I don't think you were there but because the first Adam the head of that creation ate it everybody has to suffer that same punishment and now in Christ Jesus, because Christ was on the cross, obeying God, laying down his life, God actually reckoned that death to us as well. So this is very important that it's not just what we do as individuals, but actually what heads are we under. So that's the discourse of the, the teaching of today. So God deals with humanity based on the on the on the works of these two heads. So God is relating with every man based on who is their head not first as to who they are but who is their head what's their root what's their source because before god if the root is holy the branches are holy so god's first priority is that anytime god sees a human being in my own opinion my own interpretation is either seeing the first adam or is looking at the last adams this is why the scripture tells us we are in christ Jesus. so god is dealing with man in the old testament we could say the old testament was god dealing with humanity based on the works of the first adam based on the works of the first Adam, Israel was the only exemption in my own opinion and that was because there was the blood of animals and bulls which was just a temporary measure. We get into the new creation, God has now decided that look, in the old creation I dealt with humanity based on the work of the first Adam. In the new creation, in the New Testament, God is now dealing with as many that have believed in the last Adam based on the works of the second man who is also the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the eyes of God, the actions of the earth affect members of the body and I mean we could say it's fair to say that someone steals for example and commits a, an atrocious act he, he, of course if the person is sentenced let's say the person committed murder and is sentenced to their life imprisonment the hands and the legs are going to say they're not going to say oh we don't know anything about it is the head that did it no every other person goes in there so whatever actions the head do it affects members of the body as it's often said that water flows to the body when you're baiting from your head to i mean from your head downward so the obedience of the head the body will reap the benefits the disobedience of the head the body will bear the punishment so that's why it's important that 
So even when we are praying before God, we are not coming in our identity before God. We are coming in the identity of Christ. That's why all through the New Testament we say in Christ, in Him, because He becomes our new head. And as our new head, that means every whether it is the peace of God we are enjoying is because of the head. We never, we should never lose sight of that. When I'm praising God, I'm praising God because of my head. Because I know what God is doing in my life and the life of every saint of God is that it's based on the relationship I have with the head. So God extends his hand of fellowship to me, to the believers, because of the head. God hears our prayers, he accepts our offerings and thanksgiving because of the head. This is why Christ is the substance of our appreciation and our praise to God. Adam represents God's free creation. Christ in his resurrection represents God's new creation. So God's two basic words is the first creation, which we see in Genesis 1 and 2, essentially Genesis 1. Then Christ upon his resurrection actually better the new creation of God. What a joy. After Adam failed God, so rather than God going back to the dust of the earth to make another man, create another man, God himself became the second man. Very mysterious. Very mysterious. So Adam failed God in his purpose by disobeying God. He was supposed to eat of the tree of life so as to receive God as his life and essence. But he disobeyed God, he heard of the, forbid, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the fruits of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So rather than God going back to the dust of the earth to make another man, God himself became the second man in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the world becoming flesh, who is God manifested in the flesh. By that, we are part of the old creation race. So, by our biological birth, naturally, nobody just dropped from heaven. Everybody, even the, even God Himself, had to come through the womb of a woman. So, by that, we are part of the biological. Biologically, we are part of the first race of man. That's the uh, uh, first Adam. By regeneration, or by new birth, or by rebirth, we are part of the new creation race. This is why. The Lord said in John 3 that, look, whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, the first creation. Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. And so that's our second birth. That's our rebirth that we are born of God. We are not just born of man as John 1. 12 13 puts it that he came to his own, his own did not receive him. For as many that receive him to them, he gave power to become sons of God who are not born of flesh the will of man of blood but who are born of god so that's how we became members of the new creation by a rebirth in christ jesus so our believing has transferred us out of the first man into the second man and i think every right which is the gospel which we preach that is what we that's the message we have for the world that god has taking us out of the first man or god has created for the unsaved god has created a means by which you can change the roots of your back. And so a believer, a non-believer might say, why do I need to change the roots of my back? The reason is because the father of that, or not the father, but the first Adam, or the root, or the source of that creation, is terrible. God says that, well, that and after he committed the treason and felony against God, disobeying God, there was a punishment, toiling, laboring, I mean, all manners of darkness. Satan became his new God, his new Lord, or his new master. So that's why the change is needed so that they come under the blessings of God, which is God's original idea for man, that he would be the content of man. So the first race of man is out of the earth, does earthly. And we can see more of this. Maybe I could read from it from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, I think 46, 47, uh, uh, talks about that the first man is of the earth, earthly. And the second man is of the heavens, uh, which is heaven. First Corinthians fourteen, First Corinthians fifteen. I could read from verse uh, from verse forty-seven. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As the as is the earthly, such are they that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they that are heavenly. And if we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So the first Adam is earthly because it was from the dust of the earth. The second man is heavenly, so we bear the image of the heavenly one. And this doesn't mean that our physical appearance changes. Of course, you know that, except if there's someone that's a new believer. It doesn't mean that when we get go to that rebirth, someone that probably had at the store all of a sudden became taller, or someone that is short. No, our it's not the physical really. It's the spirit man that gets goes through that rebirth. That's 
reconnection back to God. So the new race of man is out of heaven and thus it is heavenly. What a joy. As part of the new race, our origin is God. We came forth from God. So we can see this in 1 John 4, 4, that we are of God. That is, we proceeded from God. God gave back to us. We are not just adopted children of God or adopted sons of God. We were giving back. Scripture mentioned in 1 John 5, 1. Uh, John 1 12 13 mentioning that we are born of God God gave back to us when in the resurrection of Jesus Christ first Peter 1 3 that uh, that the God uh, that God of all mercy who has begotten us unto a lively hope to the resurrection of Christ Jesus so we came forth from God in the new race so the old race was by creation God speaking and God saying that God spoke you could say to himself, he said, let us make man and our own image. The new race is by resurrection. So these are the two essential works of God. The first creation, which was by God speaking. The new creation, couldn't, God couldn't just speak to see it in existence. And that's one of the things we look at, uh, one of the focus of today's teaching, that the new creation came out of resurrection. It was calling forth life from on life, which is death. That is, God himself had to become a man for the new creation to come into. The first creation, God spoke, God spoke, God saw, God spoke, God saw. But if the new creation, he couldn't just speak to see. He himself had to become a man and even go through the process of death and resurrection in the person of Christ. So resurrection better something in the human race that was not only historical but unrepeatable. Unrepeatable. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So something, uh, will I call it historical, beyond historical, but something that uh, defies all, will I almost call it that, almost all that defies science. I mean that the third day someone rose from the dead resurrection defiled everything that we've seen in the human race it was something historical but something that can never be repeated again in humanity so this is why we celebrate especially the easter period when we are celebrating the resurrection of the lord jesus christ which is the root of how the new creation came into being so resurrection is not just coming out of death but comparing death it's one thing for someone to just scribble their way go to the dog fight and just come out of death but and just say okay they just came out of death but this was resurrection is conquering death that's uh, for that same first corinthian i could read it 15 says that where's your death where's your sting oh death uh thanks be to god who gives us the victory first corinthian 15 verse 56 55 oh death where's the sting oh grave where's your victory or maybe if I start from 54. So when this corruptible have put on incorruptible and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass. And does the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So resurrection is the conquering of death. What a joy, what a joy. That's why I said I am the resurrection and the life. The new race is the bursting forth of a new life that hasn't been before. This life hasn't existed before. This is not just um, a created life. This is the life of God that has now gone through death and resurrection. Pyro, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think, in my own opinion, I, could, I stand to be corrected on this. I really don't think that the life, there was any life that has gone through death and resurrected from death. Because Yes, the scripture says that Jesus was slain from the foundation of the earth because in the eyes of God, it's humans that have time. God doesn't live in the realm of time. He lives in the realm of eternity. So even before it was done, in the eyes of God, it had been done. So what happens is that in the resurrection of Christ, a new life search for a life of God that has now, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, who has now gone through death and now resurrected to bring forth a unique life what a joy what a joy so the new creation is calling forth out of nothing so god spoke god saw let there be a light and there was light it was basically god creating things from things that are not seen right as hebrews 11 3 i think makes us to understand but in the new the, that's the first creation but in the new creation uh, the second creation is calling forth life from all life it's one thing for you to create out of nothing it's another thing, it's a greater work for you now to now take what has, what I call it darkness, what has death, and to bring out life from that own life. 
that's a greater work so that's why the new creation work is seen as a greater work of god than the first creation and of course we know that that's a pattern of god that uh, because god himself became a man as <laughs> the new creation essentially resurrection of our death to bring forth a different kind of life so that's the life that is in us as believers in christ jesus so whatever profession you are in uh, whether say whatever field of life that you are in or whether in a family, in a neighborhood, and you are a child of God, realize that the life in you, the life in us, is not, um, it's not, a, it's not a common human life per se. God, in addition to the human life we have, we now have the resurrected life in us, the life of God Himself that gives us creativity, that gives us inventions, wisdom, power. What a joy! What a joy! A life that has not only overcome death, a life that has also conquered and overcome death. What a joy! blood that will be shed for the new creation to come into being so before the new creation came into being blood that will be shed in the first creation i don't think there was any account when god was creating genesis 1 that blood was being shed it was after man sin and this is not just the blood of animals this is the blood of the son of god himself so you can see the price because the life of the flesh is in the blood god had to pass through the process of death for the new creation to come into being god in christ jesus had to go through the process of death and resurrection as a grain of wheat that needed to be sown died and now germinated to produce many grains the many grains are just us the believers the members of the body of christ so you can see the great price god had to pay for the new creation that's the joy we have that we are celebrating the headship of christ in the new creation and this is second corinthians 5 17 that therefore if anyone is in christ jesus he is a new creation we if he's in christ so to be in christ jesus to have christ as our head is a new creation all things have passed away that is the old race of man and now behold all things have become new yes this is god's blueprint for the new creation that is spiritually in our spirit man but there's still work that needs to be done in our soul because man is a tripartite being is a spirit he has a soul he lives in a body all things are passed away yes the spirit man that died in adam is now alive but the soul still has elements of adamic nature and this is why god plants us in churches and we are enjoyed to study the word of god to feed on the word of god which is the process of sanctification and transformation so that the new creation element will actually saturate our hearts and the old tendencies will not resurrect itself again of course the body is just the servant of the soul is the servant of the mind wherever the mind goes the mind gives direction to the body so christ has the last adam terminated the old creation and in resurrection he became a life-giving spirit to germinate the new creation so christ is the essential is the is the is the head of the new creation because in the eyes of god he ended the old creation as the last adam there will never be another adam the first adam and the last adam christ is the last third man so he ended the old creation reconciled all things back to god colossians 1 i think 19 20 reconciled all things back to god and now in his death and resurrection germinated he brought forth the new creation what a joy what a joy someone say ah, oh the old creation is terminated in the eyes of god for as many that have believed now this becomes a reality in their life it doesn't mean that we don't have of course there are unbelievers out there who are still members of the old creation but in the eyes of god the price has been paid god considers all of us as one person in adam in the same way he considers all of us as one person in christ and which is what we said earlier on that the way god relates with humanity is based on these two men so anywhere i believe god goes to his justice either adam or christ <laughs> so when someone is unsaved they are just still in adam so god relates to humanity based on the works of christ so for us who are believers in christ that's the joy that we have that god is relating with us god is having a relationship with us god is fellowshipping with us god is answering our prayers because of our union with christ we never lose sight of that if we lose sight of that i think we are already flawed we are already defeated in the christian race because that's where we draw our strength from because it's our life it's our fortress it's our nourisher it's the essence of our life it is his grace that is rubbing up on us you know the peace we are enjoying as Romans, and you can get more of this in romans chapter 5 we say that therefore we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ we see that phrase through in by because all through the new testament god is trying to tell us that these prepositions are telling us that everything we are enjoying in the new creation is because of him the lord jesus christ so in the new man 
Colossians 3.10, the abbreviated version ends, is neither, there is neither Jew nor Greek, but Christ is all and in all. So in the new creation, we all are embodiments of Christ. We are not just representative of a distant Christ. We are the embodiment. Christ lives in us. He said, abide in me and I in you. So in the new creation, there's no such thing, in my opinion, Jew or Gentile, whether you're an American, you're an African, whether you are black, you're white, you're male, female, there's no such in the new creation. In the new creation, everyone is one, one new man. That is because Christ is in all. Christ is neither black nor white. Christ is neither male or female. Allow me to use that expression because the new creation, we are told that we are all sons of God. That is, we are now because Christ is in us and there is no Jew, no Gentile, there's no different. That's why we see ourselves as one in Christ Jesus. What a joy, what a joy. The gospel is God's invitation into the new man. So the gospel we are sharing or the gospel we are proclaiming is that we are saying that God has now created the new race of man. The old race of man is heading for destruction and everyone that is a member of that old race god is now saying this is an invitation to come into the new race and this in this new race it is just the very being of god himself that is our essence that is our life so god's invitation into the new man is the gospel the new race of man came out of resurrection just like we said before so the old race of man came out of creation and upon creation man fell in the garden of Eden and all Satan became the new master of man so the works of darkness started it's the order of the day in the old race of man the imagination of man became desperately wicked in Christ Jesus in his incarnation God has now given man the opportunity to be a member of the new race of man which is what essentially the New Testament we could say is essentially Christ as the head means that is the life and essence of the new creation so as a head because life flows to the body from the head our eyes on the head, the ears and what have you. So we can see essentially that as the head of the new creation is the source of the creation, is the essence, is the element, is the substance. You know, just like the substance of an orange is the juice, the substance of a golden cup is gold. So the essence of the new creation is just the being of Christ, is the foundation of the new creation, is the pillar of the new creation, is the realm, because the new creation is the realm as well. So is everything about the new creation as the head so him as a head doesn't just mean that it's just a figure head it means that it's in everything that's why that scripture Colossians 3 1 10 says that Christ is all and in all so for he himself this is Ephesians chapter 2 different place in the scripture but it's just a few that we brought for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation because in his death that was how the new creation man or the new man was created or the new man came into being was parted which is the church the body of christ the believers who are now the lord's body so for he himself he himself the lord himself christ is our peace so it's our peace before god anyone i don't think any mortal man will ever be at peace with god or god will be at peace with them if they are outside of christ it was through christ that god christ that we have peace with god as romans 5 1 tells us so still on ephesians chapter 2 i think from 4 13 14 15 there about having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandment contained in the ordinances it was in his flesh on the cross of calvary that that enmity between god and man was destroyed for as many that believe christ has paid the price also first timothy chapter 2 also talks about there's one god and there's one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus of course is a ransom for humanity and still on Ephesians chapter 2 so as to create in himself one new man from the two that is the Jews and the Gentiles the Jews are the everybody is a Gentile after Adam fell everybody became a Gentile but God called Abraham out of the Gentile world to start something great which is the Israelites which is now what we can call the Jew so of course the Jew represents the people of God from the Old Testament and the Gentiles represent every other person that doesn't have a covenant relationship with God. So in the death of Christ, God, Christ has now made everyone one, therefore making peace, making us to have peace before God. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. So the veil of the temple was rent. Christ has now paved the way for whether you're a Jew or Gentile. In the Old Testament, nobody could dare go in there except the high priest alone. In the New Testament, for as many that believe, we are enjoyed to come boldly to the throne of grace. It's a blessing. 
it's a blessing that money cannot buy to have access into the holiest to have access into the very presence of god what a joy what a joy and that's why in the place of intercession and in prayers we are giving thanks to god so for the new race of man because christ is our head is the we are one spirit with the lord because we are members of his body the new race um, is the members of the body of Christ, as 1 Corinthians 6, 17 tells us that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So we are members of the body of Christ because uh, that's being members of the body of Christ makes us makes Christ makes us mem uh, makes us members of the new race, and we are being one spirit with the Lord. So it's not just being one spirit with the Lord. Earlier we said that we're a spirit, we have a soul, we, 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 we live in a body. So we are one spirit with the Lord. We also have the mind of Christ. I think 1 Corinthians chapter 2 we have the mind of christ and we are now members of his body what's a joy that every the tripartite part of our being is involved in this union with the lord so as members of the new creation we are the lord's body what does that mean as the lord's body that means we are the visibility of the lord we are his foot soldiers on earth we are the continuation of christ because the grain of wheat that was sown which was christ in that john 12 24 we are now the many grains that he has now produced in his resurrection so we are the lord's body so to touch us is to touch christ what happens to us is happening to Christ. This was why when Paul, Saul of Tarsus were accosted, the Lord said, why are you persecuting me? Because he was touching the believers, he was touching his body. So what a joy, what a privilege to be. And again in 1 Corinthians 6, he said, our body is the Lord and the Lord is our, our body. What a joy, it's our body is for the Lord and the Lord is for our body because we are members of the new creation. As members of the new race, we are the visibility of Christ. Christ is still visible on earth. Yes, he's on the throne in heaven, but he's still here on earth. How is he here on earth? True members of his body. We have the visibility of Christ. We have his, that's why I say greater works than this you will do. Because he's in us. He said, Lord, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He's in us. The spirit of Christ is still with us. He's still carrying out his work. Christ, he actually never left. Technically, he never, I think there was a video teaching we did that he actually never left because he's still here with us today, but it's just his invisible presence we have, which is even stronger, my own opinion. He actually even said it in John 4, it's explained like, go away, <laughs> because if I don't go away, the Spirit will not come, and he said, I will come back to you. So today is everywhere in his resurrected state. What a joy, what a joy. As members of his body, we are seated with him in the heavenly, Ephesians 2 as well, I think verse 6 or verse 8, that as members of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ we are seated with him in the heavenly wherever the head is the body is there technically my head cannot be here my body will be somewhere else no because there's an organic union between the head and the body so let's not see ourselves that we are just in this earthly realm here we are not just uh, on this earth here we are because we are also living in the realm of the heavenly we are seated with Christ in the heavenly and what a joy what a joy as members of the new race we are the abode of God we are the dwelling place of God. So the new race is the abode of God. The new race is where God dwells. That's the house of God. That is the resident of God. So God's address on the earth here are members of the new creation. This is a privilege, a privilege, a privilege to be a resident, uh, to have God resident in us. So we are the abode of God. What a joy, what a joy. So the new race is a carrier of God's life. So these are some of the attributes of the new race the new creation christians uh believers call it <laughs> uh, whatever the scripture has given to us royal priesthood because we are carriers of the life of god what about the old race no the old race they don't carry the life of god adam lost that right because he didn't eat of the tree of life if he had done that the new the first race will have had the whole will have god's life in them but in the new race because Christ is the life of God. We are the carriers of the life of God as members of the new race. What a joy. So as head of the new race, the Lord Jesus Christ, what is true of him is true of us, his body. So what the identity of the head is the identity of the body. Just um, even in our secular world, day-to-day -day living, the passport photograph that we take is just the head and the identity given to the head is just representing the body. So what is true of the head is true of us because he lives we will live also as he told as he said in john chapter 14. so let's not see how it doesn't mean in his godhead this relates to um, our position as the members of the new creation not the godhead so what is true of christ is true of us christ is seated in the heavenly 
we are seated in the heavenly. Christ died on the cross of Calvary. We also died on the cross of Calvary in the eyes of God. Just like in Hebrews chapter 7, when God said that Levi paid tithe in Abraham because he was still in the noise of Abraham when Abraham met Mekisedek. So God attributes the, uh, just like God even, that's which is called justification. That's what I believe because justification. Adam sinned. God said every human race will bear the punishment. So Christ was on the cross. As many that believe are also on the cross with Christ. So what happened to him happened to us as well all through the process of that crucifixion. That's why we go through baptism. Our own cross is just a kind of easy cross because we just went through baptism. We came out of the old man. He was the one that paid the gruesome price on the cross of Calvary. So his death is our death. Romans chapter 6, the death of Christ is our death and his resurrection is our resurrection because in his resurrection, we resurrected with him because we were in him in the eyes of God. Just like we were in Adam, when Adam was eating, disobeying God. So now that Christ has obeyed God, before God, as many that believe were in Christ. So his death is our death, his resurrection is our resurrection. And we are seated with him. His life is our life. His wisdom is our wisdom. As the head of the new race, his life is our life. So the life of Christ is our very life. He is our life actually today. is our very life today. And the joy that we have. What a great asset to have God in Christ as our life. It's one thing for a dog to have the life of a lion. <laughs> that dog is a special breed. <laughs> but now let's imagine God becoming our life in Christ Jesus. <laughs> I doubt if there are anything, if there's anything that would beat that. His authority is our authority. This is why he has delegated his authority and power to us. Because we are his, we are his foot soldiers. We are the ones to execute his will on the earth. He's, we are just vessels, glorified vessels. He is the one carrying out his work, working in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It's a blessing to be a member of the new race of man. Because here we are, we are just glorified vessels. Grace has brought us to this point and he's working his good pleasure through us in the place of prayer, studying his word, in the place of diligence, becoming a light in every sphere of human endeavor, whatever calling, whether in the marketplace, businessman, marriage, your neighborhood. God is saying that, look, you are the light in that neighborhood because this authority has now become our authority, which is what we execute, especially in the place of prayer and confession of the word of God. God is not God is no outward God to the members of the new race. In the old race, God is outward of man. In the new race, God is dwelling in the new race of man. <laughs> what a blessing. With that, will anything beat this? So God is not an outward God to us. Yes, God is on the throne in heaven, but God is on the same God on the throne in heaven. The very God on the throne in heaven is the very God that is making his home in our hearts in the new race of man. In the old race of man, they are enemy of God. The head of the new creation is the head of all things. So the quality of the head determines the well, I call it the health, or the health of the head determines the health of the body. The quality of the head determines the quality of the body. So, when we look at the resume of the head of the new race, we now start seeing wonderful things. The Lord of hosts, the head of all things. So, this gives us confidence that even when, for example, maybe someone is applying for a contract somewhere, or one way they are applying for scholarship, something in us as members of the new creation that the head of all things. So even if the one sitting on the board is, um, is not saved, we have authority if we are diligent in the place of prayers, in the place of intercession, in the place of calling him to be what seems not, calling the will of God into being because he is the head of all things. He is the ruler over the kings of the head. What the, the kings of the earth, what a joy that the hearts of the kings are in his hand. So the head of the new soul. In summary, again, today we've been able to look at Adam represents God's first creation. Christ in his resurrection represents God's new creation. Also, we said as well that God considers all of us as one person in Adam. In the same way, he considers all of us as one person in Christ. Before God, we are one person in Christ, one in Christ. That's why our fellow brothers and sisters, we are members of the same body. So what happened to Adam happened to us in the old race of man. And now what happened to Christ on the cross of Calvary and his resurrection is also reckoned to us in the new creation to as many that believe. But it is faith, true faith that this works. You need to know about it <laughs> so that we start getting more confident in the place of prayer. So resurrection battles something in the 
human race that was not only historical but unrepeatable so this new creation life that we have in us or this new life of god is a different kind of life a life that has conquered death it's a unique life it's it's something that is can never be repeated repeated again in the history of humanity so the new race is the bursting forth of new life that hasn't been before a life that we've never seen and we will never see such a life again apart from the life that came through the lord jesus christ no other life will be greater than this life the zoe life of god that we have in us what a joy so christ as a head means that is the life and essence of the new creation race so today we've been able to look at the fact that christ is the head of the new race of man we can get more of this from romans chapter 5 as well and all through the bible we have the old creation and the new creation race the old creation race is a race without the life of god in them the new creation race is a race with the life of god creation was the first war or the first race of man was by creation the second race was by resurrection from the dead through the person of the lord jesus christ god this with humanity with these two federal heads adam or christ the first man or the second man if you are not in christ by default you are in the first man and the punishment or the travail the works of darkness that actually is the order of the day in the old race of man will be involved in that like no matter how good they do they are still the root is bad so the the branches and the tree as well is going to be bad so that's why god in regeneration or in the gospel in the new covenant actually grafts us from adam takes us out of adam and puts us into christ and that's why we are called sons and daughters of god because we came forth from resurrection he is the firstborn son of god from the dead we are his many brothers so this race of man that the peace we are enjoying today is because christ is our head the grace that is flowing into our life is because christ is our head that we are called that the rivers of living water is flowing from us blessing nations all over the world is because christ is our head our nourishment everything we are getting maybe i could even read from colossians chapter 2 that holding fast the head maybe i, I probably I, I didn't remember and i probably would have had it in there colossians chapter 2 verse 19 and not holding the head from which all the body by joint and bands have nourishment minister and need together increase it with the increase of god that is where enjoy to hold on to the head. Who is the head? The Lord Jesus Christ is the head of all principalities and power, is the head of all things. The head that we have, his resume, is the Lord of hosts, the ruler over the kings of the head. The word of God enjoyed us to hold on to the head. That is the faith. Looking on to Jesus, the originator, the author, and the perfecter, the finisher of our faith, because it's the very substance of our faith. Anything we are enjoying in the new creation is because of Christ. We are children of God because of Christ. We are the temple of God because of Christ. The life of God is in us because of Christ. So we never lose sight of that. That forms the basis of our prayer. It is in His name we come to God. It is through His blood we are sanctified before God. It is in spirit in us that makes God to make His dwelling place in our heart. What a joy for what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. For us hallelujah to our heavenly father hallelujah to god the son hallelujah to god the holy spirit praise the lord hallelujah